A wanted poster soon went up in the posting offices all over the world. FBI agents fanned out all over the globe in search of all the escaping scientific toe questers. Wait, hold it, said Greybeard into a deadline. The mermaid mate, and I don't even have a boat. Greybeard was testing his new scuba diving equipment after taking a long walk off a short pier, waiting for his ship to come in that would take him way out onto the Great Barrier Reef, where he would continue to investigate life under the sea and post some more of his findings. He had just discovered a mermaid swimming toward him below, while a dark fate was arriving above. Nobody's warnings to him of impending doom had been slightly delayed by his remote location. However, Greybeard's waterproof mobile phone soon rang underwater, and he listened amazed as instructions were given to proceed to the ninja base across the bay, ending with hurry mate, and then click. Why can't these guys ever learn how to park? He climbed up onto the pier just in time to see six gray MI6 sedans pulling up to the beach and screeching to a halt, some of them slipping on into the water. Greybeard didn't run but walked for they didn't know what he looked like and because many boaters were milling about. He calmly grabbed a beer from someone's boat, took off some of his diving equipment and looked around for the fastest boat that he could steal or borrow forever. Why did I get involved with this toe stuff, already knowing that he had had to since it was the most ultimate quest of all? The Holy Grail. We are the Knights of the Temporal. He picked up his pace when he saw the agents swarming onto the pier and checking everyone out. They must have Google unearthed me, he surmised. Excuse me, Greybeard said politely as he bumped someone off their speedboat. It's life or life in confinement. He puttered away slowly. But MI6 suspected him because he looked like James Bond. And so they all ran to the end of the pier, wildly firing tranquilizer darts. Greybeard was good at darts and so he threw them back, giving some zzzz to a couple of them and then pushed full throttle ahead through a group of jet skiers and off into the bay. It's grey against grey, he decided. MI6 was unloading something grey and floatable. He looked back after a while only to see six MI6 high-speed grey powerboats pursuing him. I'm no match for these, although I do have a lead, but to where? He was hitting the speed bumps of the waves and driving as reckless as the boat safety courts had told him not to, and was nearly blinded by the spray, but then remembered that he still had his goggles on. They'll never torture the toe out of me, but if they tickle my foot I may have to die laughing. After some time they began closing in on him with no land in sight and so his whole life of informational posts began to pass before his eyes. Forces, electricity, numina, sea creatures, quarks, evolution, getting tanked at the Many Worlds pub. Tanks? Fuel tanks? A huge ocean liner had just come over the horizon at full speed but Greybeard doubted he could get to it for any assistance for his unrelenting shadows were inexorably approaching much as the night follows the day, now but a kilometer behind. Thanks for the memories, everyone, he sighed. As they drew near, Greybeard jettisoned three quarters of his fuel and shot a flare into both the inflammable and flammable stuff at just the right moment, causing a ruckus and disabling two of the boats. Good try, Greybeard the pirate, he said to himself, who answered back, but probably not good enough. A bit of time had been saved while two agents were being rescued by the other MI6 boats, but it was only going to prolong his agony and delay for but a short while, their ecstasy of capturing him. Back at full speed for six more kilometers, but with his fuel now getting low, Greybeard felt the exhilaration of his last hurrah on this earth as the feds were closing in on him again. The ocean liner was approaching very close, but there would be no time for him to sneak aboard unobserved. Not even Tom Clancy could save him now. This is it, he thought. Die or die. Ready to protect the toe at any or all cost, Greybeard steered his boat with a last-minute adjustment toward a head-on collision with the ocean liner, and then lay down in the front of the boat. The ocean liner struck Greybeard's boat amidships, breaking it in two, accompanied by a huge fireball explosion of the rear portion that the amazed MI6 agents took as his epitaph.
That's two tanks for the memories, said Greybeard, with bubbles coming out of his mouth, as he assembled the last of his scuba gear, tanks, fins, and mouthpiece underwater, noting the raging firestorm up above. He swam on, thirty feet submerged, for a kilometer or two to vacate the area, then sat down on the bottom of the sea and drank an amber fluid. Beer, in English. Here's to the toe. May it never fall into the wrong hands. And are we going to the ninja center in this putt-putt? Well, hooly dooly, Greybeard answered. Did nobody send you? I give you fifth degree. A small rowboat appeared out of nowhere with a robed black ninja waving to him. G'day, mate. Good on ya. Cut the strine. I need some zeds. Zzz. Too right. Tom Clancy wished them well and they rode toward the ninja outpost. No man look for rowboat and no man be island said the fifth degree grandmaster. Whatever you say, PhD. Darkness fell as they entered the training ground and Greybeard was going to sleep well, dreaming of fish women. I test time, Growbeard, said the ninth degree grandmaster. Printed by AccuVision 2005, S5, please read line bottom of chart, S1, shut eye time, protested Greybeard. No, sorry Grayman, please close ears, what C? Two, two eyes. Do you think I lost one as a pirate? You have good eye. Okay, I'll see you eye to eye. S5, now now great beard, we teach you mind's eye. S1, I see you are going to end up in the ICU. That better. Still seeing mermaid? We broke up, finished, due to my imminent death. Befriend, we teach you seeing in dark. I already have x-ray vision, and hey, why is your underwear so ragged? What if you have to go to the hospital, like real soon? You find sight full of seaweed, but good eye too. I give you four eyes, two eyes. I don't need glasses. What if Toei scientist woman blind since birth named Mary regains sight? Know she what color banana is? Well, I thought not. And since I know her, I tried to trick her and showed her a blue banana. She say not banana. How do you know that? While blind, she knew everything about banana. Well, I'll be darned. Teach me more. See you, woman on moon. See you later.